hey guys welcome back so in the previous ones we've actually built out our authentication and also our expenses and income crud so now i want us to start talking about the concept of renderers so at this point when a user is trying to register to our site you can see that we get our errors and then of course we get the status code and all that stuff but then we might have a requirement like so let's say whenever we had an error in the response we should prefix like all our responses with the keyword errors or let's say we whenever we were rendering like data let's say now we sign up a user who is actually correct so let me change this let's say we sign up a user like this one and the requirement would be to return all this in a key called data such that we can have a consistent we can have like consistent responses and let's say we want to add other more information to these responses so we can do that using the concept of renderers all right, so for us to get started with that, here is the documentation for renderers. So you can, you guys can take a look at how you can define different types of, of renderers, how you can handle if you the different types of data you're sending. So if you're sending something that's not like JSON, yeah, so how you do things like those. So take some time to take a look at this documentation. But what I want us to do now is actually handle those two simple scenarios. So whenever we have errors, we want to prefix all our responses with the key errors. Whenever we have correct responses and no errors, we should prefix all our response with the key data. So let's do that. So here in authentication, I'm going to create a file called renderers, renderers.py. Okay. So right here, I'm going to, to import renderers from REST framework. So in from REST framework, import renderers. So I'm gonna create a custom class here. This is gonna be something like auth renderer. Actually, I'm gonna call it user renderer. So this is gonna inherit from renderers. Dot. So since for us we are rendering out JSON, we are going to be using a JSON renderer. But then you can actually see that right here we have different types of of renderers we can we can take a look at so i'm gonna now bring in json renderer which is this one and then whenever the whenever django rest framework is returning responses there has to be this function called render so so let's bring that in so we need to override it so render so now when i ought to use autocomplete you can see that the render actually takes in a couple of parameters but one of the most important ones is data. So this, you would think of this as the response that's going to be sent back. So in here, let's say we wanted to change or like intercept it and add some stuff and add, add some keys, even change the data itself, we would do that. So the way we do that is, so for now, we are going to think of what are going to send back as the response. So I'm gonna create a variable response and I'm gonna send it to, set it to empty for now. So. I want to look at the data being sent. So whenever we are sending data down and then we have errors, we can actually look at this. So I'm going to add a PDB here and then we'll get back to this. But what I want to do now is I want to set this renderer to be used as our renderer for our authentication app views. So I'm going to copy this. So if we go to our views.py, which is, oh, I need to move this one inside authentication. So let me do that. I'm going to set our views to use this renderer. So if we go to our register view, we can actually define another property here called renderer underscore classes. And this can be a tuple, so we can have user renderer. So we need to import it. So let's bring it in. So from renderers, import user renderer make sure that's imported correct all right so make sure it's a tuple so now that we have this if we go to our registration view and we try to register so if you come back here let's reload oh server is down so let's see render us no more decode renders okay let's see uh so this is at uh hmm. oh it should be from dot renderers yeah so that should restart the server good we come back and try to register. So here, I click try it out and use this same information. 
you can see that we are paused in the debugger. So now, if we come back here, you can see that now we can try to look at everything that's, that's available in this in this argument being passed down. So here, if you look at data, you can see that everything being sent down basically are errors, right? So in here, we can actually based on this data to to send down something so what i want us to do now is whenever we have errors being sent down it's quite obvious that within this data response of course there will always be many things but one of the things that are found to be always consistent will be having error this these three in the responses being sent down so i'm gonna copy that these three so whenever we have errors so this is always going to be present okay so i'm going to copy this and now if we go back to our renderer so here i'm going to do a simple if statement so here i'm going to do if then i'm going to use this as a string detail so i want to check if it's in data but i want to stringify data i want to turn data to a string so i'm going to use str so whenever we have this then i want to be changing the response and appending there some case so here i'm going to set the response to be so let me import json here because we are going to need to, to use some utilities so here i'm going to set the response to be json the dumps and then what i want to do is add an errors key so i'm going to add errors and then i'm going to set the value of this to be data okay so from json this should be import json not from json all right so otherwise we want to add data instead so here we can do an else so we can set now the response to be data so this now can be data and then that will mean that this will be modified and we now we need to return the, the new response instead of our our generic return so here we can return the response instead so so here define a char set and set this to utf8 all right so every run every custom renderer you create you always have to remember to do that otherwise it might not like work so if we execute you can see that we get the errors key being appended and then you can see that we get basically the errors and then the errors so this is actually good. This is what we wanted. So let's say we use the correct one. We try to execute with this. You can see that we get a response and then the, all the, the data is prefixed with, with data. So which is really good, which is what we want. So if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.